I mentioned Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana used to be a very pro prosperous city like Detroit. And uh, here's a story I tell about Gary. I did it on, on NPR radio in, in the US just before I came over. So imagine a guy called Gary who lived in Gary, Indiana. And uh, Gary used to work uh, in the union job in one of the big car plants. And it's 1991, he was earning 30 bucks an hour. That's really what he was earning in 2016 dollars. It was a lot. And they shut it down and they moved it abroad. And parts bits went to Mexico and some other bits went elsewhere and all that sort of stuff. So he was meant to retrain. He was meant to retrain as a software engineer, but there was no money for retraining because we gave it all away in tax cuts because that's what politicians like to do. So he then got a job in a call center. He was fine, he adapted. But he's down to 15 bucks an hour. Five years later, the call center goes from Indiana to India. He now works for the largest employer in the United States, which is Walmart. He gets 11 bucks an hour. And every day he reads in the newspaper that him and all his mates are about to be replaced by robots. Wall Street's delighted. They got bailed out. He lives in a slum. He's pissed. That's Trump's support. That's an incredibly powerful self-understanding and self-narrative. Now tell me what Clinton's narrative is. There isn't one. There isn't one. That's why Trump cannot be discounted. All of the gaffes, all of the racism, all the incendiary comments, it's not just feeding to the base. It's bouncing off him for a reason, because he deep down has one really powerful narrative and a really connected core constituency. And that type of thing hasn't happened in American politics in a generation.